Bore da, a chryso cynnes i chi un hafoliad o drenewydd y bore yma a hyd dda yr ail sil o'r advent. Good morning and a very warm welcome to you to our worship this morning from Newtown on this second Sunday of Advent. And to do the honours this morning of lighting our second Advent candle representing peace, we have Matthew and Tracy. We lit the first candle to pray for hope. We light the second candle to pray for peace. Peace for ourselves and for the whole world. We ask for the peace of mind that comes from seeing things clearly. We pray for everyone who lives in the midst of conflict or war. May they find some sign of peace that shines like this candle flame. Lord Jesus Christ, Prince of Peace, reign in our hearts and in all the world. Come close to us this Advent. Amen. Advent him to bring us into the mood of this season. Advent, the season of waiting for the coming of our Lord. 
We pray and we wait. But we also prepare in excitement and anticipation for the flame of Jesus to lighten up in our hearts anew this Christmas. Advent is the time for us to take stock and to reflect on our lives and to consider with all honesty whether we are loyal servants of the Lord and whether we are ready and willing to allow him to be truly present in our lives. Are we transformed or have we more work to do upon ourselves? If this is the case, then we need to get on with our preparation for Christmas is coming. Christmas is about being transformed. Jesus, when he came, transformed lives. He transformed people and he transformed communities. He crossed the line in embracing the lowly and rejected and in challenging the religious authorities and the injustices of his day. Today, on the second Sunday of Advent, in our appointed Gospel reading, we meet with someone whose mission was to prepare the way for the coming of Jesus. Dasyniad o Evangel Mark, a reading from the Gospel of Mark. The beginning of the good news of Jesus Christ, the Son of God, as it is written in the prophet Isaiah. See, I am sending my messenger ahead of you, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make his path straight. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all the people of Jerusalem were going out to him and were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair, with a leather belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, The one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop down and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptised you with water, but he will baptise you with the Holy Spirit. John the Baptist is presented as a rather strange character, living in the wilderness and baptising all the people who came to him. John's was the voice calling in the desert. His message was simple in one respect, repent and be baptised. When John came, baptising and calling people to repentance, he was calling them to be cleansed and renewed, to be brought back into the compass of God's love. He was calling them to be transformed, to live differently. And that is no easy task. To live differently and be transformed people, we have to address difficult and tough issues. Words like politics, oppression, imperialism and liberation are not words that we necessarily connect with Advent. But this is what John is actually encouraging his listeners to hear. And this is what we are encouraged to hear today in our Gospel reading. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight, cries John in the wilderness. Now, those would be very welcomed words for those who were oppressed and rejected in his day, but not so by the religious leaders and political authorities. John is quoting the prophet Isaiah here, who first spoke those words in the days of Israel's captivity in Babylon. The imagery Isaiah uses is from the practice of clearing the pathway for a new ruler's procession to the city in order to be inaugurated as the sovereign of the people. Bumps were levelled, potholes were filled, rocks were removed, weeds were pulled up, crooked places were straightened for the ruler's procession to his people. Isaiah uses this imagery to proclaim a word of hope to his people in the midst of their hopelessness while in Babylonian captivity. John uses Isaiah's imagery to tell his people to prepare the pathway 
for the one who comes bringing salvation and liberation to the people. Prepare the way, says John. Remove the injustices and inequities that block God's pathway. Lift up those valleys sunken by despair and despondency. Knock down the haughty hills of pride and prejudice. Prepare the way for God, who comes bringing justice and liberation through the Messiah. Now this is what I call a welcome and challenging Advent message. As John set his life on a path of making straight the way for others, we are called to do the very same today. Jesus tells us time and time again that the greatest of all commandments, of all laws, is the law of love, the law of concern for those around us. We, you and I, have an obligation to all those around us to take the skills and the resources we have and make straight the path for others to reach the kingdom by pointing the way, as John did, to Jesus. As Corrie ten Boom, who spent years in the Ravensburg concentration camp under Hitler's reign, once wrote, put yourself, your ability, your money at God's disposal. He can do much more with it than you can. It is crucial that each one of us give of ourselves beyond attendance at church services week after week. Not just by our actions, for that is merely humanism. Not just by our prayers and words, for that can dwindle into hypocrisy. We are called to, in all things, word and deed, prayer and action, by what we say and what we do, we are called to share the Christ story and thereby draw others to journey with us. Scholar John Stott wrote, The Christian Church has a noble record of philanthropic work for the poor and hungry, the sick, the victims of oppression and discrimination, slaves, prisoners, orphans, refugees and dropouts. We must also evangelise, which means literally to spread the good news of Jesus Christ. Although every Christian is not called to be a minister or a missionary, Stott writes, God does intend every Christian to be a witness to Jesus Christ in their homes, among their friends, in their college or place of work. It is their solemn responsibility to live a consistent, loving, humble, honest, Christ-like life and to seek to win other people for Christ. John the Baptist calls us to be besides one another, building paths for each other, and all the while allowing Christ to increase. Our repentance, our prayer, our study of the scriptures, our participation in the sacraments, the use of our gifts in our service and evangelism, all of these are vital to the preparation of the coming of God's kingdom. If we are going to take seriously preparing the way for the coming reign of God, we need to get started. Grab a hoe, get a shovel, fill a potto, level the road, pick up a rock, pull up a weed, volunteer to feed the hungry, work on a project for the homeless, work for peace, dismantle prejudice, cry out for justice and an end to the unnecessary suffering of our brothers and sisters who are less fortunate in this world. Let go of some of your privileges and possessions. Welcome a stranger. Visit a prisoner. For God's dominion has already begun. God is coming down the highway of this wilderness world. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Amen. Make way, make way. Make way, make way. For the King of Kings. For the King of Kings. Make way, make way. Make way, make way. For the King of Kings. For the King of Kings. Make way, make way for Christ the King. King splendor arise, fling wide the gates and welcome thee.
churches well to begin with some celebratory news and good news we do indeed congratulate Pam and Peter Thompson who were celebrating their 49th wedding anniversary last Friday I mentioned to them that I was very pleased that we weren't missing out on their 50th anniversary and the big party um, I'm not sure if they're planning that but I pray and hope they had um, a lovely time in celebrating their 49th anniversary congratulations to you both some other good news that came from grandmother of Evie. Evie rang the bell at Birmingham Hospital on Wednesday evening to signify the end of her chemotherapy treatment. Her grandmother and grandfather Judy Birch and Alan and the parents and all involved including brother Finn and I'm sure Evie herself are thrilled. We have been asked to continue praying for Evie for um, there is quite a, a long way uh, ahead for her um, and further consultations, but just pray now for healing. We continue to pray for little Carlos and for baby Ronnie. We pray for Jane and for Rob, for Mark and for Kitty. Pray for Beryl, a friend of mine who is in the hospital as Petiguina in Bangor. Pray for Arwin and Nesta. Pray for Boris and Margaret. Boris having spent time in the same hospital as Petit Gwynedd in Bangor. We continue praying for June Phillips, who is at home re recovering, and for Vera Reynolds, staying with her daughter, recovering from her surgery. And we uh, continue to pray for Marion Wilson, who hopefully will be home very soon to recover from a broken ankle, a very damaged ankle. And we pray for her as well as she battles with a positive uh, result of a COVID test. Pray for her now and Johan, who will be in isolation. We also pray for Jeanette's parents. Her father is in hospital and so pray for her as she uh, worries and is concerned for her parents and for healing for both of them. And we continue to pray for the soul of Pat Edgerton. Her funeral will be at St. Lachlan Church this coming Friday. The burial will be at the cemetery in Newtown, where her parents have been buried and where her father looked after the cemetery for many, many years. If people would like to make their way to either venue to be standing um, in appropriate places, uh, please do so, but please do uh, continue to guard yourself and to keep to all the rules and regulations as we are required to do. 
pray for Jean Humphreys, her great friend who is very bereft on her loss. And pray for her as well as she battles with ill health herself and for her concern for Jeff, her brother who is ill. Pray for the soul of Ruth from Welshpool and for her twin sister, Aira Davies, now grieving for her. Aira lives in Abermule and worships with her at Abrahavis and Santa Chayan. And we continue to pray for the soul of Betty Lane. Her funeral is this coming Tuesday at All Saints Church. Pray for Paul and Anita and all the family. And now we continue with our prayers as we are led by Peter Wyatt and his wife Pam. Peter ministered for a time with the deaf and so you'll see a little sign language when we come to Our Father. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your Son, our Lord, promised his disciples that he would send the Holy Spirit upon them, who would lead them into all truth. Open our eyes that we too may become aware of your truth and action in the world around us. We see beauty in nature, in the lives of many people, and we sometimes fail to acknowledge the truth you promised to reveal to us, your disciples. We now give you thanks for the dedication of all those seeking how to combat the effects of the present pandemic. We pray for guidance on the proper use and the distribution of these vaccines, so that all your people may benefit from them. We pray for the safety of those who will have great difficulty in getting the medication to remote places, for pilots, drivers, cyclists and canoeists delivering vaccines and sometimes with little training administering these vaccines. In your wonderful world, may we be generous to those who are in need and cheerful givers and thankful survivors. May we be mindful and respectful to your creation and be ready to accept change for a better way of life that is in tune with your will. We humbly but confidently offer these prayers in the name of Jesus our Lord and in the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, in the midst of a troubled world, you are light and life. Send us your healing for those who are ill, your strength for those who are suffering, your compassion for those who grieve, and your courage for those who work for the healing and service of others. Bless our nation of Wales with the life-giving spirit of your love and grant us your mercy, revealed in the person of Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. And now the Lord's Prayer. Our, our Father, Father in, in heaven, heaven hallowed be, be your name. Your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Your, your will, will be done. done. On, on earth, the same, same as, as in heaven. heaven. Give, give us, us today our daily bread and, and forgive, forgive us our sins, sins as we forgive those who sin, sin against, against us. Lead us, us not into temptation, temptation but, but free us, us from evil. evil. For evil. yours is the kingdom, the power and, and the glory now, now and, and forever. Amen. Amen. O dod at the weather and or all yet gidengili. This brings us to the end of our time of worship together. Pray that it has been an experience that has been pleasurable and that you have felt the presence of the Lord truly within. Gwyrion, let us pray. Father God, today we lit the candle representing peace. We pray for peace in our world, peace in our own communities and in our own hearts. Father God, may we be instigators of your peace and may we be bold in our Christian witness 
as we prepare the way for others that they may encounter the glory of the Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be among you today and always. Amen. Into the darkness of this world Into the shadows of the night Into this loveless place you came Lightened our burdens, eased our pain And made these hearts your home Into the darkness once again Oh come, Lord Jesus, come Come with your love to make us whole Come with your light to lead us on Child Emmanuel, hope of the ages, God with us. Visit again this broken place, till all the earth declares your praise and your great mercies Jesus come.